Now this is an Empire Fortress. Hey, how's it going? My name is Jackie Fish and welcome back to another online battle for Total War Warhammer 2. Today we are diving in with a 4 vs 3. We have 4 attackers and 3 defenders on this absolutely amazing custom map. This is truly what Total War Warhammer Sieges could have been like and my god is it a beautiful map indeed. We have this really cool outer layer that we're going to be fighting over defending the village. We have two bridges in as well that the attackers are going to come from. We have this inner kind of keep layer right here with heavy walls and obviously multiple gate points, which we're going to be trying to break our way through another inner city. Then as we continue to go back, we kind of have the last bastion of the defenses, another gate. And then finally, we have the inner fortress right here that if the defenders do get pushed back this far we'll have to fight hard to defend we are playing the undead factions basically trying to kind of keep that theme and i believe we also have the skaven on our side so we do obviously have myself playing as a manfred von karstein bringing you know a wealth of skeleton warriors i've got a corpse cart a terror geist manfred on his zombie dragon some grave guards some crypt horrors and some var geist as well as a unit of blood knights as well because you, you can't kind of play this without bringing the awesome looking blood knights uh then over on our other position so this is kind of where one of us is attacking right here we're going to be kind of coming through and assaulting this part of the settlement then our main assault is going to consist of uh, a unit or a faction of skaven and then we also have the dark elves as well so the skaven slaves and everything are also going to be moving towards the enemy position again just trying to put as much pressure down on this outer layer so we can crumble it and move into the next layer as quickly as possible and once again you can see that you know with the skaven and the Dark Elves are bringing a whole wealth of, you know, units. We've got some of the Clam Rats, some Black Guard of Nagaron, some Artillery, an Abomination, some Rattling Gunners, some uh, Jazeel Rifles, uh, and you got some Bleak Swords and other stuff. So, yeah, some pretty good armies. Then we also have uh, the uh, the Vampire Coast over here. So we have a Colossus Titan. Is that what these called? Uh, Necrofest Colossus. We have some uh, Zombie Pirates and just a whole wealth of units, even some Depth Guard in this army as well, as big old Bess and some other units kind of scattered around um, realistically this was a bad place to put our vampire coast faction because we don't really have a good chance to fire a lot of their gun guns in this big choke point but we'll see a bit more why uh, we maybe should have put them in the center um, as this was our first time playing then for the defenders we have the empire led by Cole Franz. you can actually see him up there defending his fortress uh, and he's going to be bringing a whole wealth of the new units. This, uh, oh my god, this thing right here, the Black Lion War Wagon, is an insane regiment of renown. If you can keep this thing safe from flyers, it just melts anything that comes close to it. Oh my god, it is insane. We've got some crossbows. We also have a unit of, is this Karak Norn, I think, maybe? But again, we've got a Dwarven faction bringing some of the Iron Breakers, Longbeards, and all that lovely stuff around. And then finally, I think we have the Golden, um, the Golden... Uh, circle, whatever they're called, the new Belthazar Gelt faction as well, and he's going to be like scattered around in here. I think he's may yeah, he's mainly defending outside with the silver bullets and other infantry as well. So yeah, let's just get this battle underway. Let's get it kicked off, and I'm excited to see how this one does turn out. Let me just turn the music on as well. And then we'll we'll get this this yeah this bad boy started. So obviously right off the bat we're just going to be trying to push forward, um, you know, throwing forward our skeleton warriors down the bridge as fast as physically possible, trying to get into the enemy uh, lines so that their towers aren't that strong. And with this map, the towers are ridiculous ridiculously strong we didn't realize it at the time but look at this the uh the colossus right here is already almost dead just from these towers like they're absolutely crazy um and we kind of didn't expect this to happen and that's one of the reasons why i was saying like we shouldn't have put this player on this bridge we should have put like the skaven or something because you can't unfortunately actually reinforce on this map at the bridge so kind of you had to deploy an army here to break through and it's pretty important you do do so because it is the inner layer of the settlement right so you want to make sure that you can get through here and attack and uh, put pressure on this inner layer but it would be kind of nice if there was room to like reinforce this bridge so you could maybe attack it a little bit more delayed rather than having to go in right away but just straight away you know look at this army the vampire coast having a hard time of it and the colossus is going to go down because of the towers which is yeah insane then then things were ridiculously strong 
Over on this side, we are making great progress, though. We've got the rattling gunners. We've got the, uh, the warp stone artillery pieces bombarding this defensive position. And it's going to be enough to go ahead and break through this unit of uh, this unit of spearmen. Obviously, a weak unit, but it's going to be nice to push through. And, you know, they've already actually made pretty good progress over here. Belthazar Gelt is going in with a unit of his demigriffs as well into these Skaven slaves, uh, which are going to get wiped away. But it's good kind of to tie them up. And now the rest of the Skaven are going to be pouring through these positions with the Hydra as well. But once again, these towers are just racking up damage. I honestly don't really feel like you need towers um, in this fortress. Uh, we are already fighting a 4v3, but maybe you do. I'm not too sure. Over here, I did throw in my VAR guys because I honestly did not want my... Um my infantry being shot by the silver bullets but like looking back on this i really should have just let the var guys you know sit back delay them a lot more um but yeah these cannons and mortars and stuff with the engineer as well are doing a lot of damage to my line so i kind of wanted to delay this as much as possible uh, i am bringing up manfred as well at some point uh, very soon yeah you can see the towers and the cannons have just destroyed my white knight um when my white king sorry um, which hasn't been good, but yeah, the rest of my army is moving up. I have been taking damage, but with these towers coming in, it's just a lot of, you know, a lot of damage piling up. You can see my Vargeist over here also getting hit by the cannon. Gonna have a nice Winds of Death here. I didn't actually realize how much the Winds of Death, because I haven't, I haven't played this Winds for ages. I mean, it's gonna obviously make, break this up, but as you know, Spearman, I definitely should have saved my Winds of Magic for more invocations for sure. Over on the other side, you can see the Dark Elf player is now breaking through into this village with a whole range of units. Uh, we have some of the Corsairs and the Sisters of Slaughter breaking through and obviously going to be trying to dive onto these demigriffs, catch these guys whilst the micro is elsewhere. And if you can you know, take these guys out, it's a huge unit to bring down. Um, and you can already see, like, we're making pretty good progress inside the city. We have Malekith moving in. The artillery is bombarding several positions. I don't think... Maybe it wouldn't be as bad if you could actually go ahead and and uh, destroy some of these towers. But it's very hard to do so. Um, yeah, we do actually have Malekith trying to chase off Belzazar. But Belzazar is really fast on his Pegasus. I think it's Quicksilver is what it's called. Um, and Quicksilver is really fast, so you can get out like that. Over on the other gate, you can see the bombardment is going on as the Great Empire gates are close to being broken down. But they have Sigmar's will infused in them. And they're trying their best But the artillery. This is just a brutal place to attack. And you kind of needed like the Skaven to, to come through here. But now the gate is down. He can come flying through here. The Empire already unleashing a hell in these choke points. These are uh, Hellblaster Volley Guns really are just unstoppable um but you know as long as the vampire coast can get in here they can start to use their creatures and a lot of their other units because as you maybe have noticed in the defender side of things they've got a lot of like weaker units in their army you know they've got a lot of these spearmen because they've spent so heavily on a handful of really good units so because of that you know it's gonna leave them pretty vulnerable if they're not careful oh my god look at that miss that looks cool it's gonna leave them vulnerable you know if they run out of infantry it's gonna be quite easy for us to continue to break through um and get onto these more expensive units especially now that the vampires themselves are just breaking through you got some mob brights here just pushing through the depth guard are finding their way in and all of a sudden you know things are looking pretty good for us we're breaking through in the village very nicely with envelopments coming around we're trying to chase down this luminarch we got vargeis moving in to try and come down and you know just try and catch any units and and speed up this assault as quickly as possible the artillery is helping us as well to kill these swordsmen I'm making great progress over on this right-hand side with the Skaven coming in and supporting me. Uh, you can see I'm basically completely broken through here with zombies and skeletons surrounding the spearmen, just raising more soldiers. And you can also see as well, this is a pretty big battle for Warhammer, close to 10,000 soldiers, which is quite depressing to say. I don't mean to, like, be negative, but for a game of this, like, you know, fantasy and the lore of the scale and stuff, you know, it's a shame that these battles don't go bigger because, you know, an Attila, for all its, you know, all, all the shit that people give it, I can run 24,000 men and, and it'd be absolutely fine. So, yeah, it's, it, it would have been nice for them to uh, to make the battles a little bit bigger. But I definitely understand that's kind of just not how the battles work in, in Warhammer. They're much more about kind of individual, um, you know, scales. And you do have these individual entities as well, you know, with giants, zombies, heroes and stuff. So, yeah, it's just a completely different ballpark. 
Um, for sure, for sure, for sure. But anyway, back to the battle. I have managed to surround this unit of Rangers, which has been pretty nice for me, bringing this bad boy down. Obviously, one of Bugman's, uh, so, you yeah, know, yeah, really good guard. So catching them, and especially when they have all this ammunition, is uh, pretty valuable. We're also at the gate now causing issues. I'm trying to catch this engineer. I don't want him to escape. Oh, yeah, there's also got Drick and Felix as well in this battle. Uh, I probably should have mentioned that. Um, we haven't really seen them, but, yeah, you can see... Over here, you've got Gotrick, obviously. I believe they are out now for everyone. So, yeah, you can see Gotrick with his huge uh, uh, axes. Was it Roomfang something? I can't actually remember. Um, but there you go. And you got there, my... my um, whose general was that? Oh, that's, Ma that's Malekith, right, getting shot down by the rifles, right? Yeah, on his, on his quest. Or is that Manfred? No, that is Malekith, yeah. Malekith's going to go down when a bit too deep. Be this battle was quite difficult to command flying units with all the buildings and stuff. Um, it was quite awkward. So Manfred is going to be broken, unfortunately. I'm going to be sending over um, Manfred over on this other side uh, to try and help out the Vampire Coast. Because they're having a hard time of it, obviously fighting the brunt of the Empire forces. So I'm going to send over Manfred here. I'm going to get another Winds of Death going down again. Probably shouldn't use Winds of Death. It just seems really expensive. But it does do some really good damage off of the Greatsword. So I guess it wasn't a complete waste. But yeah, I definitely could have used my Winds of Magic a lot more effectively. And now, you know, Manfred's going to come down and, and try and start getting these guys on the route. They try and fall back, you know, do a re-up with the rest of their army, which is coming around. You've got some guns and other stuff making their way in. I believe I might have some more flyers coming in. I'm not too sure. Doesn't actually look like it. But either way, I, you know, we want to be very careful here to avoid these missiles. If I would have kept my VAR guys, this would have been the perfect opportunity to come flying down right here and hit these guys. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case. As you can see, we have completely taken the outer village and now it is our time to move on into the inner layer. There's actually... Oh, yeah, one unit of Huntsman and a unit of Spim. They're breaking very quickly. But besides that, we are going to be pushing on, and I'm going to be trying to smash down this. I actually already am smashing down this gate with my Terror Geist and some of my Crypt Horrors. I'm going to be trying to break that gate down and allow our troops easy passage forward. And there you go. It has gone down, but that is going to open us up into a pretty deadly choke point. The defenders are taking no quarter. We've got Bugsman's Rangers. We've got a Luminarch. And we also have Thunderers led with uh, Ungrim as well, who's going to be doing great damage against all my large, like... But we also have a lone soldier. Oh my god, look at him go. He is ready for combat. He really is. He's like, bring it on, you undead scum. Um, and then all of a sudden, the Dark Elves are going to be coming flying through that, you know, that huge gate. Um, and I don't think our Empire Man is going to be long for this world. We have Ungrim and a Runesmith as well sitting down there. On this right-hand side, you can see Manfred. No, my, well, my other unit of Vargas managed to come down on top of these bowmen, which is nice. And we also have Manfred causing mayhem in the back. But Cole is over here. And we need to be very careful, right? Because we are pretty deep in enemy lines. You know, gun lines can quite quickly shift and move around. I definitely think I should have brought more bats in my army as well, especially in a siege battle, because bats are really cheap, and you can quite u like easily use them to just tie up enemy guns and missiles so that you can let your infantry do their work. And I definitely learned a lot from this battle because I haven't played vampires in forever. Over here, oh my god, also, one of the most annoying things in these battles is I was trying to breathe fire onto Belteshazzar, but for some reason, I guess with the the wave of velocity and stuff of the, the houses and the height, you know, graft and stuff, it just would not let me, and it was just insane. But you can hear the Luminarch getting ready to shoot him. The Luminarch going right in there, hitting uh, Noctilus and you know, bringing his HP down quite heavily. So yeah, I just could not, you know, do anything on him, and that's gonna, like, I was literally just sitting there for so long, and that really hurt me. Also, the rune of uh, Wrath is going off onto my... Is that Wrath or is that Ruin? Wrath and Ruin. Completely reducing my HP on Manfred, which is not good. And I'm also starting to I think, crumble a little bit. My vampires are I'm going to be trying to break through here. I mean, this wasn't exactly the best uh, place to put my Cryptoros, obviously because of the guns. But I'm going to basically just try and break up this long beard formation. Luckily, they, they actually moved so my Cryptoros could break through. Obviously, they have charged defense against large... And now my Cryptoras are going to manage to get on these gunners, but they're already pretty low, and they're going to start to crumble, and that's obviously going to be very painful. And there's just multiple lines, you know, this is what you do with the dwarves. You sit up, like, 
this is what Indie, Indie Pride taught me, is you set up multiple firing lines. Once you break through one line of firing, there's just another one, and another one, and another one, and another one. And that's kind of how you play the dwarfs, and it works so effectively. I mean, you saw my Cryptoras right there getting smashed. I'm going to be trying to just brute force my way through here. And I mean, realistically, think how good like a Winds of Magic would have been right here as well. It would have been great. The awful effects going off right now. You can't see a bloody thing in there. Um, and this is going to be bonuses, you know, the Rune of Negation, Rune of Open Steel. It's huge. And this is where, again, as I was saying, this can't be mine, right? No way this is mine. Oh, no, okay, that's the, I was going to say, that's, uh, that's quite effective. But yeah, look at that. There's just like, five ranks of missiles. And this is where, like, missiles would have been so huge. And once again, I make a pretty big mistake here. I try to throw in my Terror Geist, but there's just too many guns. There's too many missiles back here. If I would have had, like, a unit of uh, bats or something, that would have been huge because I could have, like, bat attacked back here and then moved up. There's just so many lines of fire. The Skaven player is doing a great job, though, of harassing these missiles. And again, realistically, maybe we needed just to wait for artillery to come up to hit these guys or do something. Uh, would have been nice. So, yeah, I think right here I'm trying to breathe fire on Beltazar. And it's just not working. I drop an invocation on myself. We've got the, uh, the bell, the plague priest moving up as well. And we are really just diving in here, trying to break through this Dormant line, but it's proving so goddamn difficult. Um, and we're, yeah, we're having a very hard time of actually doing it. But, I mean, just look at this siege map right now. It's so good. Like, this is, uh, yeah, this is just such a cool map for sure. I think the towers maybe need to be nerfed just a little bit, but it's still so cool. And I think finally, over on this left-hand side, the Vampire Coast are breaking through after such a hard and long fight. The Depth Guard, along with the rest of the Hunters and stuff, uh, or Horrors, sorry. So that is a Hunter, yeah, the Hunter um, have managed to break through here and finally clear up the Empire defense. And I mean, realistically, the Empire and the Dwarfs don't have too much left remaining. They have, obviously, their fullback position here, but they don't really have much in the way of infantry. Like, what, four or five units of infantry up there? I mean, just a ton of missiles. So again, if we had more, if I would have brought more bats, I think this could have been a much smoother process of breaking through this period. Because right now, obviously, we are pretty clumped up. Um, but they don't really have much winds of magic besides that. Because I, I saw Belthazar using it. So I was like, boys, let's just try and break through. But we are obviously leaving ourselves pretty vulnerable to the, you know, the archer fire, the guns and stuff. Which, you know, is doing a lot of damage. Mortars coming in. But kind of sometimes you do just have to brute force your way through. Um, and again, this was a friendly battle we play on our Discord. A lot of these players aren't necessarily pros at the game. They play a lot of single player, but not too much multiplayer. So these, you know, these were very much just a kind of a fun engagement to mess around. We're not trying to look for any competitive or super serious battles. As long as it's, you know, it's fun and it's enjoyable and, it, you know, we have a big large scale engagement. That's kind of the main focus. But yeah, we definitely did get punished for clumping up here. Um, and yeah, the missile fire really racked up some kills. But it's kind of hard not to when you do only have two ways into the settlement. I definitely think more aerial units would have been very beneficial to us because, yeah, as you can see, they don't really have a lot of infantry. And if I was more patient with my Vargeist, um, yeah, we could have definitely done a lot of damage. It's just sometimes it's really intimidating when you're playing and the towers are just racking up kills on like a lot of your units. And the battle's kind of laggy as well when you're playing it. So yeah, you, sometimes you have like a lot of external features. But once again, the missile's coming in. But we are breaking through. I'm bringing up some of my Blood Knights as well. I'm going to try and bring them through and get them actually onto the missiles. The Dwarfs are running very, very low. And we're going to continue to break through with more of our infantry coming up. Especially once this Vampire Coast gets around the side as well now. We can use that so effectively. Um, to, you know, just push them back. Especially if we can hit these mortars or get on the Luminarch. That would just be absolutely huge uh, for us to achieve that. We've got more lightning coming in as well, doing perfect damage. You know, the Skaven player has really been using his magic a lot more effectively than I have, um, for sure. Um, and you my, my knights over here. And then and we still have plenty of men left, so our next wave is going to come in pretty soon. I also just love the look of the Blood Knights. They're such a clean looking unit. Oh, you got Gotrick there are getting stuck in as well. So Gotrick is going to be getting his, uh, yeah, his hands bloodied. Moving and doing a lot of damage. And you can obviously hear Brian Blessed there <laughs> with the screams. Definitely even tell it's Brian. I mean, maybe I just I can tell it's Brian because I, I know. Calling him Brian like we're on a first name basis as well. Uh, also, Godtrick is out here as well. Yeah, Godtrick's out here fighting some Skaven slaves. He looks such like such a beast. Just look at him like walking around. 
He just doesn't give a fuck, does he? With his sword sheath, just like, who wants to go? Absolute monster indeed. I mean, they slay the monsters, so. But yeah, you can see we still have plenty of men to throw back into the fight. A lot of our, our missiles have, you know, it's still waiting to go. And that's actually going to go ahead and force the Empire to completely fall back from their position, which again is really good for us. It can allow us into the settlement. And then Panzer Power isn't looking that great. It definitely could be good for us, like, better. And once again, like, now would be such a good time to hit them with, like, flying maneuverable units. It was just a shame. Like, I, I didn't really realize how much I should have saved them. But, yeah, the, the, the enemy are going to be pushing back now. Falling back to their own position. But, luckily, we are going to be getting on some of their units, even though we are crumbling a little bit. You know, killing this artillery crew. This artillery crew still does have a half ammunition, so taking it out of the game is going to be pretty important. And there's a few war wagons and stuff as well we're taking out. And there's just a small vanguard of, or a rear guard, I should say, of Bugman's Rangers. Just trying to kind of buy enough time for the rest of the army to move in. I'm going to, I think, yeah, I'm going to bring up what remains of Manfred. I'm going to try and try and take down as many of these Hellblaster uh, war wagons as I can. Because as I said, they just do so much damage. They're on 236 kills. Absolutely, like, just demolishing our ranks over there. And this is, like, the perfect design. As, as dumb as it sounds, like, these are actually really good in sieges. Because they can fire over the battle lines, right? It's very hard to outflank them and get onto them. And you can obviously quite quickly protect them with missile fire to warn off other cat like other flyers and stuff. So like this is such an effective unit, it really is. And you can see the rest of the army is gonna be retreating back. Uh, we and yeah, you can just see their entire force is gonna be full on retreating right now. We're gonna be continuing to chase them, trying to bring them down. I'll triple speed for a bit of this and I'll probably cut because we're gonna have to bring in the rest of our forces for a final charge into their position. Obviously, they're gonna be falling back to this place and they can even fall back even further, but this is where they're gonna make their fate right here. And once again, more of the towers coming in. We should see so much damage. I'm just gonna scare Manfred off, unfortunately. He doesn't want to get stuck in. He's uh yeah, trying to channel his arc conduit as much as possible to get as many winds of magic pot back as possible. And as you can see, we have just uh yeah, finished off the Bugman Rangers there. And now we're gonna be forming up and making our final charge. So I'll bring it back to you guys when we are ready to push on them one last time. Like our final assault is about to commence. We have units pushing forward left, right, and center. Count Noculus has regenerated a nice amount of his HP, actually. He's got uh, so yeah, some pretty good bonuses. I assume his weapons or something give him regeneration, um, which is perfect for him. So he's going to be bringing forward the rest of his pirates. And we've got Skaven being supported as well. I just love the look of the Skaven as well. I mean, just look at this map as well. This is so nice, like, running through these huge streets, artillery going over. We've taken the Statue of Sigmar as well in the market, and the Skaven are running a rampage. I would love to do a battle, like, on this map with just four Skaven going up against two defenders. That would be really, really cool. I definitely wouldn't mind redoing this as well with something like that. Maybe two defenders would be enough to hold this uh, going up against, like, four Skaven players. I think it would be really, really fun. So maybe I will redo a map like this or do redo this map in the future with that setup. And here we go. Gotrick going in to go ahead and fulfill his Slayer Oath and defeat the evils in the war. Even though they're not they're pirates and whatever. But, you know, hey, who cares? Um, either way, you know, I mean, to be fair, Gotrick is pretty low on HP. The Hunter is going to be taken down, but more soldiers coming out. We've got some deck mob being spawned. We've also got more infantry coming around here as well. I've got some of my Grave Guard actually up front. I think this is literally all I had left now. And they're once again going to be getting destroyed by the Hellblaster volleys on them war wagons. It's just literally so maneuverable. Uh, it's such a good unit in this uh, in this type of scenario for sure. The rest of our forces are going to be just pushing down as fast as they can. The artillery is going to be coming up to try and bombard these positions. Um, we do drop down some more magic as well to try and hit these missiles. Um, and look at this as well, the Luminarch has also used up its entire ammunition, uh, which is so valuable to, to go ahead and kind of exchange all of that. It does seem like though Gotrick is going to go down uh, once and for all, being overrun by the vampires, uh, bringing him down you know, bit by bit, and I think that's going to be it for him. Yeah, there you go, Gotrick has been slain, the legendary warrior. I'm, I mean, I'm sure he'll just be brought back to life like he does in the lore, but... You know, and then given all more immortality and then killed and then... Oh, it's, it's, a, it's a mess. It really is. Um, the gods like to play with Gotrick for sure. 
And you can just see, like, he's trying to chase it down. Manfred is over here as well. I think we're all trying to bring this thing down, this Luminarch. But the thing is, the Luminarch is actually out of ammunition. So we literally should have just ignored this thing. But it's going to be going on an absolute rampage right now. Um, and just running through our ranks. And, I mean, realistically, this is an amazing distraction. Giving its life for Sigma. And we, we spend all this time chasing it. And it's just going to leave us really vulnerable to a lot of other missile fire and artillery. We have managed to push them back from, from this courtyard, which is perfect. Um, that's going to allow us to continue to move forward our army. Trying to, you know, continue to put aggression on this. Belsazar is going to continue. I think Belsazar is going off after... Um, after Manfred, maybe. It was so annoying. The amount of times in this battle I was trying to breathe fire on Belteshazzar and it just didn't work. And I mean, honestly, realistically, his HP is quite low as well. So I think it could have been achieved. Um, Count Noctilus as well has been it, like done such an amazing job this battle. But Ungrim is going to take him down once and for all. Um, and you, oh my god, more artillery coming. Is that another Luminarch back there? Yeah, that's literally another Luminarch again. So two Luminarchs have run out of ammunition. I think at this point, there's really no hope left for us whatsoever. This is just a futile charge as we try and break their ranks. But we just don't have anything left. And they have, again, a really good missile position. I definitely think if they would have had one less player, this would have been more even. Or maybe if we would have just picked, you know, more, like, better factions. I think if we would have had a Chaos instead of maybe a Skaven or maybe instead of a vampire count, I think we would have been much more effective because, you know, Chaos do have that heavier infantry capable of breaking through the, uh, you know, the dwarfs and other stuff, you know, with their chosen. And we obviously, the, the Hellblaster uh, cannons as well would be really, really effective in a battle like this. I like it from, because they can shoot obviously over the walls and, and do some serious damage to the missiles. Got another brass orb being dropped down onto the gunners, but it's a little bit too late for us. And the last of our forces are going to be breaking as we charge in. I mean, we have some artillery coming in, but that's basically the game of the battle. We are going to be defeated as the, uh, yeah, the rest of our forces get broken down. But, I mean, that's just such a cool map, and I love doing battles like this on a map like this. Because, I mean, just look at I mean, even, like, over here, as the battle winds down, I think mean, it's literally just the artillery moving in um, and being finished off. Like, even this right here is just so cool. Like, it's just such a cool way in. But I love the way that the map itself, you know, doesn't just rely on a bridge like this. You know, you have other ways to go in. So it's not just, like, super choke pointy. It would have been nice, maybe. And it would be something really cool to see. Uh, in a siege battle like this, where there's only two entrances into this a place like this, it'd be really cool if they made, like, a breached wall or something. You know, like, for example, just make it so, like, the terrain goes up and down and, like, have this entire section of the wall removed and, like, have it all derelict. That'd be, like, another really cool addition to to still make it feel like a, a you know, a fortified position and still make it feel like it's, uh, you know, it's a really defensible fortress. But, you know, just kind of for the, the purpose of making a ba battle a bit more balanced, have like an extra breach in there, like as if the walls have been bombarded with missile fire. Stuff like that would be really, really cool. And here you go, the last of our warp lightning goes in, the last of our Skaven move in to, uh, to fight. And there's actually an abomination, which I think got forgotten about in this battle, which wouldn't have really made a difference, but it definitely could have been used to maybe make us push forward. Um, and also, this battle doesn't seem like it, but it was actually relatively close. Um, looking at it, they only have like four units of infantry left and a bunch of guns who are almost out of ammunition. So realistically, if we just had maybe a tad more, like if I just played a bit better, saved my wins of magic, if we just like, you know, maybe, you know, we didn't lose the Colossus Titan uh, or the Necro Colossus over here right away because of the towers, I think we could have, you know, pushed them all the way back and actually have taken that one. So I think that battle is actually a lot qu uh, closer than it, than it looked. Um, so taking a look at the kills, I think I mainly just want to take a look because my forces didn't really do too well. Manfred got a decent amount of crit kills and some of our Cryptoras over here again. You know, you got some good kills. The execution is doing good. Um, you know, a few things over here. It's such a shame about that, that Colossus. Uh, Queen Bess actually did good. I didn't actually see any of her hits, but she did good. Um, and then, but I mean, the main thing I want to see is obviously uh, the damage racking up on these missiles. You can see that you know they just they add up. You got Belteshazzar with over 200 kills, the Luminarch and the cannon, and the Luminarch with over 300 kills is just absolutely disgusting. Uh, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this battle. If you did, be sure to drop a like and a comment down below. If you want to see more custom map battles like this, also let me now know down below, and I'll see you guys in the next one.